As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been waiting for you. And today, you and I are going to return to 2 Timothy chapter 3 to see the signs which the Holy Spirit said would emerge in society at the end of the age. Now, my friends, we're in the world, but we're not a part of it. But because we're in it, we're going to see all these things happening. And we've been tagged by the Holy Spirit to live in the end of the age. Think about the privilege we have. Prophets look to the future and they prophesied about this time and you and I are living in it. And my friends, if God chose us to live in it, that means he's called us, he has appointed us, he has anointed us and he gave us 2 Timothy chapter 3 to prepare us, to alert us and awaken us to what's going to happen so that we will not be victimized by what's happening in the world and so we can rescue the perishing and care for the dying. Think of the people that you know today that are really suffering in some area of their life because of nonsense going on in relationships, in society, crazy things that are being taught by the media and by the educational systems in Hollywood. And ay, 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 everywhere you look, it seems like people are losing their minds and people are really confronted by so many difficult things. And you and I have the answers that they need. And because the Holy Spirit gave us 2 Timothy chapter 3, He awakened us to what was going to happen so we could protect ourselves and so we could help others. But I want you to reach for your pencil or a pen and a piece of paper, get ready to take notes because today we're going to dive deep into 2 Timothy chapter 3. But first, I want to remind you that we're offering you the entire series, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. It is 15 parts. It is just jam-packed. And of course, every day I've been going to the whiteboard. I'm going to go there again today. And we've really been looking at what the Greek text says about what's going to occur in society at the end of the age. And it comes with a study guide that is just wonderful. And we're offering you the book by the same title, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. It is an easy read. It is 453 pages, and every chapter ends with action steps. I want to help you know what to do in response to what you're learning when you read this book or when you hear this series. My friends, this is a book you need, and you ought to buy several because this would be a great missionary to send to somebody else. Maybe there are some things you've been wanting to say to somebody else, and you don't know how to walk through that door. Well, just send them the book and let the book do the talking for you. It will be a blessing to somebody. But I also want you to reach out to us and let us know how to pray for you because we're praying people and we're waiting for the telephone to ring right now or for your email to show up in our inbox so we can begin to pray for you. Reach for your Bible and go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and we're going to begin again today in verse 1 which really is our foundational verse. The King James Version of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says this, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. But the RIV is amazing. Listen to this. You emphatically and categorically need to know with unquestionable certainty that in the very end of days when time has sailed to its last port and no more time remains for the journey, that last season will stand in the midst of uncontrollable, unpredictable, hurtful, treacherous, menacing times that will be emotionally difficult for people to bear. Now that is what we have covered in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. We have also covered verse 2 and verse 3, but in yesterday's program we ended with 2 Timothy 3 and 4, so let's look at it again. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, the King James Version says, people will be traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And again, this doesn't mean they won't love God. It just means in comparison, if they have to choose which they love the most, their actions show they love pleasure more than they love God. Then you come to verse 5, which says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such 
turn away. And we've seen that this word form describes an outward form which is correct, but it lacks the inner substance. And here we see a picture of spiritual mannequins emerging in the church at the end of the age. They may dress like ministry. They may wrap crosses around their neck. They may use Christian terms and Christian slogans. But my friends, inwardly, they lack the real substance of the power of God. And in fact, this verse says they deny the power of God. They may call themselves Christian, but in fact, they have so drifted from the Christian message that now they're just an outward shell of religiosity, but they no longer carry within them the substance of the gospel, the substance of the word of God, and they deny the operation of the power of God. And this verse says, from such turn away. Turn away in Greek is very important. The Greek word apo. Trope, it's a compound of two words. The word trope means to turn. The word apo means away from and implies the idea of distance, which means you're to turn away from these folks and put distance between yourself and them. Well, today, tragically, some Christians sincerely make a mistake. They know that they're a part of a church that is drifting in the wrong direction. They know that they're going to a church that is no longer teaching the Bible as it once did but they stay there with the hopes that maybe they will make a difference. But my friend, most often those churches just continue to drift. And if you don't get out of it, you're going to be affected by it. And Paul knew that. And so Paul said, if you're a part of a group that is drifting, you need to get out of it. Oppo, you need to put space between yourself and then pray for them from a distance. But you need to find a place of faith that's really preaching the word of God and that moves in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is where you need to be. And in fact, the RIV of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 would be like this. Though they may possess an outward form of religiosity, they will rebuff, refute, refuse and even reject the authentic power that goes along with genuine godliness. You must mentally, spiritually, and physically turn away from such people. And my friends, the Greek is very, very strong. This is not a suggestion. It is a command. So I have to ask you, if you're a part of a group that is drifting, are you going to obey the scripture or are you going to stay with them and unfortunately just keep drifting? But let's go on because verse six says, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Here we have an example of a verse which confused everybody for years and years and years. What does this mean? For of this sort of they which creep into houses. Who is it that's creeping into houses? What does that mean? Well, today we better understand this verse. But notice he says, for of this sort. Well, the Greek is very, very important. And let's go to the whiteboard. By the way, thank you for letting me know that you're enjoying the whiteboard. On the whiteboard, we see that the te Greek text begins with ek, tauto. The word ek means out. Tauto means out of this group, out of this very group. What group? The group that is drifting, the group that is changing. They've abandoned the authoritative teachings of the Bible. They probably become more pluralistic and more inclusive and more progressive. This very group, out of this very group, God emphatically will be hoi in dunontes. Hoi means it is plural, which means unfortunately, this is going to be a significant group at the very end of the age. And this comes from the Greek word in duo, and it's very, very important. And in the King James Version, it is translated as the word creep. But that's a strange translation. So let me tell you what this word creep really means and who are the creeps that we are to be aware of. This phrase creep into is a translation of this word in duo, which means to dress in a disguise by wrapping oneself in a garment. It describes a stealth operation of one who wears a disguise to make himself and his message more appealing so he can gain access into people's lives. The word houses, here you have this word houses, oikias, which is plural. It is from the Greek word oikos. And the Greek word oikos, which here is plural, oikias, means households, homes, or residences. It depicts a clandestine or undercover operation to gain access into, the word into is translated from the Greek word ice, which means into, it carries the idea of 
penetration. They're trying to make a penetration into households, homes, or residences. Well, in the past, when we saw this phrase, those who creep into, we thought, who are these people that are creeping into people's houses? But today, it's easier for us to understand this first. And I want to read to you from my book. From the vantage point of our present high-tech age, we see the Holy Spirit was likely referring to the age of technology when radio, television, cable systems, and the Internet created an environment that makes creeping into houses very, very easy. While on one hand, we're all grateful for the advent of digital technology and access to information, we have also realized it has opened the floodgates for nonsense to creep into houses, just as the Holy Spirit prophesied it would occur at the end of the age, at the end of the age. But what and who are these people that are trying to creep into houses. These are people that have changed the message. They've abandoned the gospel. They've left the power of God, and they're trying to find access and space in people's minds and in people's homes. It's what it means. And this is why it is so very important today that we know who we're watching. We know who we're listening to. We know what they believe. Now, for friends, I'm going to tell you, I am a TV ministry, and I'm glad that you're watching me, but you need to know who I am. You need to test me. You need to know anybody that you're listening to. And I will tell you that even though I have Christian TV in my own home, there are certain voices I will not let into my house because I've listened to them and I've discerned that if you really dig to the core of their teaching, it is unhealthy teaching and I'm not going to let it in my house. And in fact, sometimes I will actually say, change the channel. We're not watching that person in our home. I really guard my heart and my mind and Denise, I believe our home is our paradise, and we need to keep the devil out of it. And the devil is looking for a way to creep into our spaces. God has entrusted you with the care of your ears, your eyes, your heart, and your mind, and especially in these last days with the advent of digital technology. There is a plethora of new faces, new voices. We don't even know who they are or what they believe. And by going to YouTube or some other website, you can just click on and suddenly people are speaking to you that you don't even know who they are. My friends, some of them really are great voices. And I listen to a lot of them. Some of them are voices that you need to avoid. You need to make sure some of the creeps don't get into your house. And that is exactly what Paul is saying in this verse. And in fact, he goes on to say that their desire is to lead captive silly women. What in the world does that mean when he says lead captive? Well, it is a translation of this very, very long Greek word. And I want to tell you what it means. This particular Greek word here translated lead captive is from an old word used to depict a moment when an enemy would thrust the point of a spear into the back of a captive to push him any direction he wanted him to go. So it came to denote the idea of manipulation by mental or spiritual suggestion. Thus, the Holy Spirit here foretold a time would come when the devil would begin to manipulate people with information that creeps into their homes under the disguise of help. And notice, according to this verse, the target of the devil will be silly women, which is from this Greek, gunaikaria from the Greek word gune, which is the word for a woman. Now, this may at first seem very insulting about women, but in fact, it's really quite a compliment because silly women here is a really bad translation in the King James Version. A better translation would be needy women or weak women, and it refers to women at the end of the age who will feel an acute sense of need in their lives. They will feel an acute sense of need. And for this reason, it could be better translated needy women. But as Paul went on, he described exactly what kind of women these were. And he said that these were women who were laden with sins. The word laden is a translation of this particular Greek word, which means to be overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Women that are dealing with personal failures, 
problems, disappointments in life, and it describes women at the end of the age who feel disappointed, frustrated, overwhelmed, the high hopes they'd had for their lives in their marriage, in their family, or their career didn't happen as they dreamed. So here in this verse, verse 6, the Holy Spirit prophesies that certain women at the end of the age will feel particularly vulnerable and overwhelmed by life. And the inference is this will cause these women to become targets of manipulation. Now that is amazing. And it goes on to say this particular group of women are led away by divers lusts. The word lust is a form of the Greek word epithumia, the word epithumia really describes their deepest, deepest longings. And the use of all of these Greek words together indicates that many women will be desperate to find help. And often unsafe voices will appear to tug on their hearts and manipulate their emotions to lead them in a wrong direction in the disguise of help. It paints a picture of women in a weakened, vulnerable condition within the privacy of their homes and with access to media and the Internet. They sincerely and desperately search for answers to their pain and their inner struggles. And then suddenly someone appears creeping into their houses through some form of media to appeal and to address the need which they are feeling in their life. Wow, that is amazing. You need to understand that advertisers, businesses, industries, they all understand that women are the main target. If they can convince a woman that a product is needed, that house is gonna have that product. If they can convince a woman that that's the best car, that's probably the car that house is gonna end up with. Advertisers spend their dollars to reach women. They bypass the men because they know the women have such power in the home. And now at the end of the age, this verse says the devil's going to target women. And this makes me, friend, want to remind you why it is so important that we get the word of God into people's spaces. If the devil's trying to creep into homes, let's make sure we get the word of God into those homes and block the enemy from finding entrance into people's personal spaces. But the devil is where well that if he can find an inroad to influence the mind of a woman, it will open the door for him to creep into that house and begin to influence the entire family. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, Paul sounded the alarm regarding Satan's desire to exploit women at the conclusion of the age. Now, the truth is the devil wants to exploit everybody. And today we have a lot of needy men as well. But it's women who have such a controlling factor in their homes. That just is the truth. I'll give the example of Denise. I'm the head of our home, but I'm telling you, Denise has a lot of influence in our home. Women have a lot of influence, and the devil knows that. And therefore, he's going to clandestinely try to creep into spaces to influence women, needy women, disappointed women, led away with divers' lusts, deepest longings that are unfulfilled, and the devil's going to offer them a solution which is contrary to the Word of God, and he's going to do it in the disguise of spiritual mannequins, people who look good, sound good, they've shown up looking like they are the answer, but in fact, the devil will operate through them to penetrate homes at the end of the age. All of that is in this verse. And this is how I would translate verse 6. These types project themselves as help with the intention of gaining access into people's homes to manipulate them, especially women who feel overwhelmed by many disappointing failures in life and who are easier to lead astray and sway because they have so many unmet longings. Wow. Well, we've got a lot more to cover in tomorrow's program, but I'm not done yet. I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the question, what does the Bible say about monsters? Monsters? That's a very interesting question. But in fact, it seems Jesus did say something about monsters in Luke chapter 21, verse 11, where he's describing events that will transpire at the end of the age just before the rapture of the church. And listen to what Jesus said. He said there'll be great earthquakes in diverse places. There'll be famines, pestilences, and fearful sights. 
that word fearful sights has never been properly translated because translators didn't know what to do with it. It is the Greek word phobitron from the word phobos, which means fearful. But when it becomes the word phobitron, it is the Greek word for monsters. And every Greek would have seen this word as meaning monsters. And it seems that Jesus really prophesies at the very end of the church age, there will be the manifestation of monstrous events or some kind of monsters in society. What are the signs that we are living in the last days? How do we survive the crazy times we are living in right now? In this 15-part series, Rick Brenner dives into the Greek New Testament to show you how to navigate these stormy end-time waters. Join Rick at the whiteboard as he visually opens key secrets to clearly show what the Bible says about the crazy times we are living in. Rick will teach you what the word perilous means, how society is prophesied to go berserk on many levels at the end of the age, how the legal, educational, and entertainment systems will become armed against the righteous, how to navigate this end-time storm. This is a series you'll want to share with others, and it is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $24. In addition to this 15-part teaching series, you can also order Rick's book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. This book will show you how to protect your family, your children, and your grandchildren from the evil being spread through media, education, Hollywood, and the courts. With the help provided in Last Day Survival Guide, you will learn how to walk in victory regardless of what is going on in the world around you. Today, we're offering this incredible book to you for just $27. Don't miss this powerful offer. Order the bundle of the series, Last Day Survival Guide, and the companion book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Call the number on your screen or visit Renner.org to order. Call or go online now. In the early 90s, we were living in Kyrgyzia, which was one of the former republics of USSR. We were absolutely non-Christian back then. We did not want to hear or listen to anything about God, although my friends tried to tell me about Lord Jesus. I knew that my grandmother was a believer, and she prayed for me and for our whole family. But we resisted and did not want to hear anything about Jesus Christ. Once, we watched TV programs with Rick Renner and Kenneth Copeland. For us, back in the 90s, in Soviet Central Asia, it was quite amazing to see Christian TV programs about God. Yes, right. In the former Soviet Union, it was very surprising to see programs about God and His love on the central television back then, because they had never said about God in the Soviet Union. Yes, and I thought that Rick Renner probably was a very interesting person. How did he manage to get on TV? We were living in a Muslim environment in Central Asia, and it took me some time to start listening to what he was saying. But he seemed to be very interesting, intelligent and smart. I thought such a remarkable professor he was. But still, we kept resisting. But several years later, something happened. Suddenly we realized, we realized, not here, but here. First, it happened to me, then to Larissa. We understood that we needed God. We could not live without God anymore. Yes, I got saved. We found one of the few Protestant churches. Then Larissa received Jesus. And our whole family today walks with God. But at that time, Rick Renner's programs became an authority for us because they had the teaching from the Bible. We did our best not to miss a single program. Moreover, we started receiving letters and free books from Rick Renner. And to get something for free in those days was something amazing. It was such a precious gift for us to get a book about God, about Christ. I thankfully think about our partners who paid for those programs that led us to salvation, who paid for the books that we read. The ministry partners made a huge difference not only in my life, but also in Larissa's life, changed our whole family. You influenced so many people who came to Jesus through such programs. And Pastor Rick Renner did not just stop there. He kept making a difference in this part of the world. And more and more people find God through Rick Renner Ministries. 
I'm so grateful to each and every partner for your giving. You are really purchasing or buying people's souls out of this lost world with your giving. Today, we've covered a lot of information in this program, and we're going to be back tomorrow to continue. But if you feel that you need somebody to pray with you, you've heard today's program, you thought, oh, I need somebody to pray with me. Well, here we are. Call us. Call us right now. Or send us an email. We're waiting to hear from you, and we will really pray for you. It would be our honor to release our faith for Jesus to do something really wonderful for you. And remember that we're offering you the entire series, which is called Last Days Survival Guide and the book by the same title, Last Days Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. You can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. But put your hand on your heart. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray today for men and women who are vulnerable in their life and whom the devil is trying to manipulate and to target. We pray for the word of God to liberate them in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. Sunday, January 21st, we're going to be with Pastor Mark and Tasha Bentliff at New Creation Church in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. On Sunday, January 28th, we'll be with Pastors Mark and Rhonda Garver at the Cornerstone Word of Life Church in Madison, Alabama. On Saturday and Sunday, February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be with Pastors Jim and Ann Freeze at the Joy Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.